Hey everybody, we are back at Knott's, but this time, different than the last four months, we're actually gonna be going inside Knott's Berry Farm for their Taste of Calico uh, event. And this is a shopping uh, and dining type experience. It's $25 for adults. You get five uh, passes on your tasting card. And so basically, it's outside dining is really what it comes down to. It's all retail, it's nothing, no rides are included. Obviously, uh, theme parks are not allowed to open in that way, but Knott's found a really creative way to allow access to the park and to an iconic part of the park to one of my favorite places in the world literally the ghost town streets and so we'll be able to go in get a little bit of food be able to maybe see sad eye joe or some of those characters and kind of wander in the area and see that now they have put in a lot of uh, safety guidelines as expected same as marketplace but to the next level i mean there's going to be temperature screening masks are of course required wherever you go in there there's going to be lots of hand sanitation stations and the stores will have uh, cue uh, markers to distinguish you know, the social distancing, and some of the stores will have designated entrances and exits. Uh, all the food are, is going to be outside. Uh, there is going to be the local crafters and stuff that are going to be there selling their wares, which is awesome that Knott's is there. They have the opportunity to come in and sell their stuff. And so everything outdoors, and it, I imagine there'll be plenty of space so that we can easily social distance if any at any point there's any crowds we can just leave and go somewhere else and I think yeah. we'll definitely be fine in that. Yeah, and they've added a lot of seating. We can see right behind us is uh, the Ghost Rider area. They've added a ton of picnic tables there. We've seen on the live feed with the webcam, they've added a ton more tables in the Calico Park area as well. Um, from what we understand, attendance is limited to about 10% of what is normally in Calico Ghost Town area. So that's a, a pretty small group there as it is. So I don't think we'll have any issues with you know crowding things. Uh, and on the note, you also said about the stores. Stores, they are limiting access in them to 50 percent uh at max at any point so things sound it sounds like a great plan we're excited to get in there can't believe we're actually going to be going inside you know the streets i mean truly this is what i know i've missed the most is just like being on main street at disneyland or being on the ghost town streets as much as i love the rides and the shows and all that it's just kind of been walking through the turnstile and seeing some of those uh, nostalgic spots so with that said let's head on in and take a look at a taste of calico all right, so queuing up here, and they ask you some questions on the way in about your health before getting into the rest of the queue. All right, and then the social distancing markers all about as we go in. Queue line, again, they've got the markers here and there, and everybody seems to be respecting that so far. And they said we're gonna go through a security screening uh, where they're gonna basically be taking, I think, scanning us as we go through for potential weapons or whatever. California shop in its new form now. So actually I was mistaken, that part was just for the temperature check. So it was kind of a constant moving. They were looking through the little lens there as you walk through it. So that's the temperature screening. And now we come to the old fashioned bag check, security check. Come to the turnstiles and so it has not quite opened yet so they've got all the dots here for everybody to line up obviously one per family or group all right so we're in hand sanitizer right to get past the uh, plexiglass check-in station there and um, old camp snoopy all right let's hit the streets all right we've made our way in and as we had hoped but didn't expect there are some character moments here. Got some of our favorite Ghost Town Alive characters interacting with the crowd. And they are reminding if anybody gets too near to distance. I think they said something about mosquitoes come if you congregate too close or something like that. You ain't gonna find no mosquitoes around here. The geography is all wrong. This is a this is desert. There ain't no water. I don't even know what water looks like, but I ain't got rocks in it. But you find them more pools. What? There's a bunch of mosquitoes there. Anybody see a mosquito in this town yet? No mosquitoes. No else is nibbling on you, Mr. Mayfield. I'm sure. I eat it. I ain't gonna lie. We've been yep, thinking thank about you folks every dang day. Thank you very much. We for being are here. the friendliest place in the West, and it ain't that friendly without you folks. That is a fact. Go thank get you so much for coming today. Get you some elote mm -hmm. and a, a three-legged chicken leg. Walk around. <laughs> enjoy the afternoon.
So in addition to food and a couple of the stores being open, we've also got a few of the smaller independent vendors that are here for like Mary Farms and some of the festivals. So neat to see them have a place where they can uh, hopefully make some money during these tough times. Corner, we have the collection of crafty items from Mrs. Doolittle. Oh, no, 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 I'm just teaching him how to rob. Absolutely. <laughs> well, there they are. Here he is, the churro. Actually, no, he's back in the way. Mud Mayfield. It's a long story. Mud yeah, it's Mudrick. Mudrick Mayfield. Yeah, the branches of his family tree, they get all twisty and all tangy. And it marks their, uh, oh, they're just one trunk. Yeah, we'll talk to them much. In terms of merchandise, haven't seen anything that's like specific to Taste the Calico, but there is lots of items specific to boys and berry goodness. And of course, a few Snoopies thrown in. social distancing lines for everybody to stand on. So lines are gonna appear a lot longer than they really are just in general everywhere we go these days because obviously the six feet rule. So I know the other day we were at downtown Disney and the line stretched the Esplanade and we thought, well, we had a half hour, let's see how long this actually takes. And in reality, it took us 20 minutes, even stretching to the Esplanade for World of Disney. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying that that's the case here. I, we've not tested out the lines to that yet but lines definitely look longer when there are the uh, spacing. But so far things have seemed to move well. We have not eaten anything yet. We're kind of waiting until things thin out in terms of people uh, in the lines. And also it cools off a little, get all the video out of the way and photos and social media and all that stuff. So saloon is closed currently uh, for this event. Again, you just get an idea of I mean, you can definitely crowd yourself anywhere, but this is a situation where if you crowd yourself, it's because you're choosing to go into a spot and do that because there's more than enough seating for the capacity. All right, so this video, actually, we're having it take place over the first two days of open. Usually we do everything in one night, but a lot of lines were so long with food, it was tough to kind of try everything, get everything in, so we came back for a second day, too. So we'll kind of be tying in some of the food review type stuff from yesterday and today. Just wanted to real quick give a look at the tasting card there. Again, this is $25 for adults. We've got Sutter's Grill, first up, Ghost Town Grub, second location there, Fireman's Barbecue, Wilderness Bro Broiler, Wilderness Dance Hall Patio, Gourmet Churro Factory, Mix It Up, and Judge Roy Bean as some of those. So we'll try and give you a few reviews, although with our 10 tastings, uh, because the lines are so long, I'm not sure if we're going to be getting to too many of them, uh, but we will do what we can do. Hi there. So uh, right now I uh, you're looking at, and I'm going to try the uh, mini stuffed churro with boysenberry filling. It's available at the Gourmet Churro Factory. Uh, which if you're not familiar with knots the at the factory the churros are made fresh there in the factory so this one is a mini one and it's stuffed with boysenberry as you can see so so it's really good it's still warm because it's as I said it's fresh and I like the sugar on top that, as far as I can tell, it's just regular sugar, maybe dyed blue. I don't think it's a boysenberry flavored sugar, but it is a very good churro. Um, like I said, I love that it's warm and fresh. So, Dancing square, so you have to dance when you're in that square. Let's see it, folks. Ma'am, let's see it. Not your heads. Your head. Yeah, they're, they're, you too, everyone in the square. Every, yeah, not your head. They, Actually, I'll, I'll teach you how to do it. Just put one finger in the air, scratch if it itches. There we go. Turn around one time and give me a ha cha cha. Ha! Give them a round of applause because that's how you wait in line, folks. Now, 
see more of the smaller vendors. If you've ever been to Mary Farm, you can tell it's a lot less than that, but still some fun stuff. Some cool offerings that are pretty unique. Example of the lines, the distancing, so what it actually takes. Length for any of these, I'm not positive. But uh, some of them are definitely lengthier. It does seem though like if you move your way around the park, you can find shorter lines and kind of change it up. I would imagine waiting till later in the day be more open. Or obviously right at rope drop, the things are pretty short. Over here, we've got a DJ set up with all these tables. A lot of added seating. Over there, you got full access to the front, not uh, to uh, touch anything or ride, but Berry Tales is there. So we put up a separate video all about Berry Tales. But again, if you find any place crowded, you just move over some place that's not crowded. That's kind of our strategy. And here you go, a few spots, you gotta be spread all out. But this is the section where you remove masks. All right, so we have found people really good about obeying social distancing um, here, but the lines for food have been quite long. So it's gonna be like really important, uh, I think, to have a strategy. Cause even though it's uh, just 10%, 15% of whatever, of what can fit in ghost town, um, there are obviously no rides or, you know, major shows or anything. So everybody is constantly in line for food and it hasn't been moving the quickest. So I uh, definitely suggest getting here early. I'm not sure about late because it's almost eight o'clock now and there's still some pretty big lines. And so keep that in consideration. And also if you can tag team it, if you got a group of two or three in your family or four or whatever to split up and send everybody into different directions. Highly recommend that uh, to kind of divide and conquer. Uh, I wanted to stop over here though at Boot Hill Cemetery just because to me, this is really, you know, what this whole thing is about is just, it's so fantastic to be in the park, seeing these kind of iconic spots again after all these months away. So I know for myself, at least for months, I've been like, you know, I miss whatever Haunted Mansion, but what I really miss is just walking around Disneyland and same thing with knots. I mean, I miss riding the rides. I miss the shows. I miss it all. But what I miss the most is just being in the place. And so if there's a way to pull it off as kind of a food festival type setup, I am all for it. And it is really easy, as I said, to distance. You know, I just haven't seen any time where like everything's crowded. There's just plenty of room, particularly in the Calico Square and out by the main stage and things like that. If you want to just kind of be all by yourself. I mean, we've done recording and stuff like that and had nobody within 20, 30 feet of us at times. So it's easy to find a quiet spot and it's fantastic in the park. But the biggest challenge is going to be just the food because again, without a multitude of things to do, I mean, there's things to see, but obviously not a ton of people uh, are like me that are going to be happy just sitting here staring at uh, cactus or cemetery or whatever. A lot of people are here primarily for uh, the food and things like that. So they're pretty much been constantly busy from about, I'd say about 4.45 on. They've been some pretty long lines. So plan accordingly, divide and conquer. Okay, so we were able to get some food despite the lines. It took a bit, but um, so a few things. This is the, um, the corn. It's pretty standard corn. It does come with cotija cheese, but um, but I got it without, just Sean's not a big fan of it. So uh, it's just butter. It's a standard corn. I won't make you watch me eat that because it'll probably squirt all over the place. 
but more unique items. Uh, this is the gumbo that has a chicken, shrimp, and boysenberry sausage, and it comes on basmati rice. So there's some of the rice. Um, go ahead and take a little quick bite of this. I did try it at the tasting preview, and I liked it, so let's see. So really good. Um, lots of different flavors, very tasty definitely enjoy it very very good actually spicy at all not too spicy i'm not actually in that bite i didn't get any kick um i'm not sure if different bites would be a little different try one more bite and more sauce there i don't know i'm not getting any sort of spice in this and i have very low tolerance for spice and it's not really a kick and I mean, maybe the slightest kick, but really not much at all. So not too spicy at all. And then this here is a boysenberry smoothie. Take a quick drink of that. Is it? It's sweet, it's boysenberry, um, a little slushy. Uh, not too complicated. I'm not sure if there's anything in the smoothie besides, or I'm not sure exactly what's in it, but um, it doesn't taste like any sort of dairy products or anything, but it's very good. A little thick, but really good. Um, and then this is the boysenberry sausage on a hoagie bun. And it comes with, um, you can get boysenberry uh, mustard or ketchup. I got ketchup. Um, very tasty um a little sweet from the boysenberry ketchup but i like it i always like um that particular um sausage and one we've had in past year so so i haven't had any food that's been a disappointment we've also tried the um the deep fried ch uh, chips with the onion dip and that was very tasty um, I tried the pastrami sandwich on the pretzel bun and that was very good. The bread in particular is really soft and very tasty. Um, I tried the boysenberry and the basil lemonades and um, I definitely like the cucumber lemonade better than the basil, but they're both good. I enjoyed them both. Um, let's see. So yeah, just lots of good tasty food. Definitely enjoy it all. Um, not, I don't think yeah nothing is disappointed so definitely enjoyed it oh the wings were like surprisingly good as well so yeah between yesterday and today we had lots of different foods and it's all been really amazing just great to be back in the park trying these foods all right so in general on the food lines we did find or we are finding that the lines really diminished around 8 30. so all of a sudden just a lot less right, we're really noticing the lines shorten a lot except for the exception is for the desserts so i mean people are following a pretty typical thing they're coming they're eating the dessert so i think over here for like the chip witch and stuff is the longest line we've seen of the night uh where it was much shorter around 4 35 30. so i guess maybe that's our strategy when we return Try to hit foods, uh, you know, break up early as much as possible, get dessert early, or wait till late. Basically, just go opposite the crowds, which it's funny, it's kind of what our scary farm strategy is, or a lot of our convention Comic Con strategies are. We our time at Knott's Berry Farm. It was surreal to be back. We're on the drive out of town, uh, back home. Uh, it was really great to be in the, the park. Uh, seemed to do a really good job with social distancing. Didn't see any problems with, you know, masks or things like that. That all seemed to be great, felt safe and all of that. Uh, the lines for food, as, as we kind of included in here, were a little rough at times there. I'd say particularly from like, I don't know, it felt like as we were walking out, we were talking about like maybe 4.45, 5 o'clock to like, the 7.30 area, and then 8.30, things really died down. Uh, the event closed at 10, so, you know, something to file away there again, dividing concrete. We've said that a few times in this video, but for us, the big thing was just being back in the park. It felt really good, you know, it was just neat to be in there, and 
obviously uh, the state has a long way to go with its numbers before we're doing things besides outside eating and stuff but for now outside eating you know this is a, a place that we'd love to eat outside if we're gonna eat outside anywhere so uh, it was really nice uh, being there and uh, huge congrats to everybody at Knott's that put the event together very creative way to do this to kind of take it back to its roots so we will have a lot more talk uh, over on the podcast very soon if you want to check that out on the podcast feeds wherever you find podcasts uh, we'll have a whole show dedicated to this topic um, and we did one of our time traveling with Ted's we did a little bit of scary farm talk as well that'll be a separate podcast coming out on that feed as well so wrapping up our time please like subscribe follow along with us hope you enjoy until next time we'll see you in line somewhere